Large you have to get two pieces of paper. It, it's just a it's a it's a better, so I figured I'd just print it out so you guys can read it a little better, I guess. Forgetting before we get going on this one if I could raise a point of order when when we start. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. No worries. Oh, thank you. Well, there it was on, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's just now pulling off. It's, it's too hot. Yeah. Same problem. Seventeenth. 
seats will call to order the Lake Don Pedro Community Services District. If the Secretary would please note, we do have a quorum. Currently absent is uh, Director Warren and Director Hankemeyer. If you'd please note that. Uh, all appropriate staff is here, so we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now, Mr. President, with your permission, I'd like to raise a point of order. I'd like us to do if possible for the order to approve it, to just go directly to the consent agenda and leave out the other things, and then do the action items. I got a call that says, that, you know, they're, they're going to cut the power off at 3 o'clock, maybe. And, and okay. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, Manager McGowan, I guess, has a uh, point of group, uh, something he wanted to add to the agenda, a point of urgency, and we could maybe do that first and then go to the consent agenda of the board. Is that what you want to do? Yes, but we should make a note that there are no public members here for public comment. Okay, all right, we can do that. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, we'll, call, we'll call, the meeting has been called to order. Yeah, Secretary, please note there is no public comment because we do not have any. Um, representatives from the community, so we'll move on. We do have a consensus. Is that okay now if we move directly into things and uh, uh, skip section three at this point in time? Okay, we have a consensus with that. Uh, so, yeah. And a consensus to add this uh, yes. information yeah. from MarTech. We'll make sure that that gets on the website also, yes. okay. and uh, okay. so that the public does have so access. we'll put uh, the extra document here, just for reference, it's dated May 19, 2020. It's a quote from MarTech. We'll put it in with the general manager's uh, information. Absolutely. So with that, we're going to move to... Uh, Anybody want to come down? Yeah, that's... It, this is in regards to uh, our emergency at intake um, Friday. Um, we, need, we, need to, we need to get this in. We didn't know that was going to happen or else I, you know, I've been right. sitting on this estimate, so... We need to get that to you. You might want to describe a little bit for the public, I mean, just okay. in case anyone... Okay. Um, uh, Thursday morning, our intake went down. There was an electrical issue. We're trying to figure out whether that is with PG&E or something else caused it. Um, we're working with our representatives on that right now. We had our electrician um, come out. Um, lots of damage on our panel, electrical panel, running our pump. So we were out of water. Uh, we were able to get Martech. Uh, Martech analysis. Martech analysis over here to do a test and uh, was able to hook up our intake and get us back into water by Friday afternoon. So these are uh, these are. This is an upgrade that I feel will be sufficient to keep us going until we completely uh, remove and replace the existing intake and upgrade it through the USDA. So hopefully this will bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. okay. When I heard about this problem, the first thing I thought of was you, and when is the barge going to be done? <laughs> right back here, the comments. Yeah. Over and over. Okay, so we're going to hold off on Section 3 at this point in time. We did do the addition for uh, Patrick's report. So let's move on down to the approval. It was a consent, yes. We're going to the consent agenda. We're going to go to the consent agenda right now. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. The only thing is we have to approve it with corrections because it was one, oh, mistake, that's right. I corrections. one mistake on page 16 mm -hmm. uh, where it shows Warren present. And I guess I wasn't here, so I, I'm assuming he wasn't here because he was absent the rest of the week. Yes, he was absent, so I need to do okay, that so correction. If you, want, if you want to do, redo your motion. Well, wait a minute because there's another one. I oh, great. <laughs> I think it says uh, you approve something that we weren't here or something. It's in the minutes. Do you know what page the minutes are on? Uh, six starting 16. at 16. Starting on page 16, Emory. Okay, I'm not sure. Page 16. Director, President Johnson, Ross, Berry, and Warren. Oh, it shows me as president. You're not there. Yeah, I'm president and You're, Yes, I've got it marked for that. Okay. okay. That's it. 
You got me marked off as precept. Yes. Okay, got yes. it. I didn't, I didn't catch it. I just thought it was absent. I yeah. I caught you. I said it was I do apologize. End of the fiscal year, I was jamming. No excuses, okay. but. So with, uh, so with corrections, uh, yes. I move to uh, approve the consent agenda. Do I have okay. a second? Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Uh, that's unanimous of the three of us that are here. So then let's move on to uh, page 19 through 25. This is approval of a resolution for amendment to AT&T lease contract. And that's pages 19 through 25. And um, Patrick, if you just want to give us, I wasn't here, I, you know, I'm yeah. assuming that you know, we've talked about this for the last several months, so I'm assuming that um, we've gone through it, I went through it, I couldn't see yeah. all the this way to this is their final uh, board of directors uh, chose to uh, continue with the monthly um, monthly lease amount. Um, they were offering twelve fifty a month. Uh, little negotiating got it to fourteen fifty a month, um, okay. but that went through a legal vetted out, checked out, and here it is. Okay. Do I have a um, motion? Well, I had a comment, Danny. Okay. Um, on page two twenty one, two at the top twenty one underneath. It says that the cell site name would be called Granite Springs. Mm -hmm. That's what they call it. But we're not even near Granite Springs on that. It's a way to hell, a way to heck over by. Uh, I, I hope but that's is. just their name. That's, yeah. That's, okay. That's, I know. I just yeah. thought of it because I didn't know the cell site on Granite Springs. Yeah, 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 that's what they call. It. You know what? That's confused me too. <laughs> Hopefully they don't think they're important on Brian's Springs. Yeah, I'm place that too. No. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's one by Nelly Sock. Okay. Anyway, so I make a motion that we accept this uh, an agreement uh, in its entirety. Okay. One second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Pass, Cindy. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to the adoption of a resolution approving an agreement with Sierra Institute Prop 1 DWR. This is pages 26 through 41. And this is a grant that was, that Patrick identified through Irwin, and it's going to help us with our uh, engineering study. Yes, sir. Okay, anything you want to add, Patrick? No, that, that's it. Um, you know, we, our preliminary engineering report had, has been concluded. That's what we're moving forward with. But this popped up recently. They've been talking about it for months, and it just came our way. And we fit the criteria, and they said, here's $30,000. We'll reimburse you for the expenses you've already incurred. Cool. Yeah. Was, so, was, was that initial engineering report like fifty grand or something? No, I, I think it was, it was $31,000, okay. and I think he was like $10.00. Ten dollars off. I, 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 it, it was what the estimate was. I want to say it was like thirty-one thousand. Okay. Good. So uh, this is covering it for the most part. Good deal. Yeah. Uh, any comments or questions? I have a question. Okay. Um, on page thirty-nine, uh, we have this appendix B, and it says that the total project is forty-five. That yes. Mariposa County Public Works is going to get five thousand. Mm -hmm. Subcrack subcontractors should have thirty, mm -hmm. and uh, MCRCD, which is a resource conservation district, gets five grand. And so is the thirty us? Thirty is us. So what this is, our group. I'm, I've been involved with the group since I came to the district. Um, we got to vote on it. So we got to vote on it. Uh, there was a vote for five thousand. Someone wanted five thousand dollars for their project. Another person wanted five thousand for their project, and then they voted that we we thirty thousand dollars. This is how the money was yes, divvied up. Yes, that's how the money was divvied up. Right. So, our responsibility is only thirty of those. Our other agencies. We have other the responsibility. RCD, yeah. RCD, who gets the approval of five thousand? Yeah. There's no payback. This is free money. Here you go. This is oh, this yes. is money to. I'll say pay for that study. That yes, they pay for the study that's yeah. already been concluded. So what we're going to do with it, we're, we're setting up an expense account because we've already paid for this. So our CPA is setting up an expense account so it doesn't show on our books, you know, a different. So, so uh, I spoke with Ever this morning. They're going to do that. And as soon as we, we get that set up, we're going to invoice uh, Sierra Institute with, with all the backup documentation showing that we paid our Blackwater Engineering Consulting. 
and then they will submit it. The only other thing that bothered me about this thing is I saw the, the requirement, if you have it, I guess we don't have to do it, is to have an EAP, an Employee Assistance Program. Um, you know, all these other agencies contract with a shrink or somebody to have an EAP, which is hugely expensive. We don't have an, it says if, I think it says if we have an EAP, we have to utilize and send employees to it if they request it. So I, it's something that all the other agencies end up getting having to do. You can look at that at your own leisure, but apparently Raymond's reviewed this and they said it wasn't a problem, so yeah. I move approval unless somebody else has another comment. Okay. Any comments, Nellie? I had one. Uh, okay. It was like if it went past December 15th, it, they had to notify them by August 30th, mm -hmm. so is it, it will be done before? Yes. Okay. Yes. It, it, the, the re, our, it's everything's done. We have everything. Oh, okay. So we're really just going to submit. And from what I've been hearing, it's like 30 day turnaround. So we should be getting money real quick. Well, that box 30 is only two weeks yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have everything's complete and we have all the invoices. So all it takes is our invoice, invoicing Sierra Institute with the backup documentation. All right. Okay. We have a first, we have a second. Nellie will second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We're going to move on to item C. Adoption of a resolution approving a contract with Inland Potable Services to repair Avenida water storage tank. Um, I show that as pages 42 to 45. Yeah. So with that, um, this year, uh, we, we budgeted for all of our tanks to be inspected and cleaned. They started with the, the, these two large ones, which have never been cleaned. Um, or sorry, Central has, but uh, the raw tank never has. It was filled with sediment. Um, luckily, the report is, is in the uh, packet as well. Um, no issues there. Very minor issues to Central. And with that, there's some epoxy uh, repair that they, they put while the tank's filled with water, and it's for rust, it's for potential corrosion control problems. So, uh, for the most part, I'm happy with our findings on our two large tanks. You know, it is an expense, um, an additional $7,400, but it needs to be done. And um, get those tanks up to, to date, and then from there, uh, while they're in town fixing that tank, uh, they're going to move on with the cleaning of the additional seven tanks within the district. It's already been voted on and approved through CIP. Okay. Yeah. Comments? Questions? Comments and questions? No. Do I have a motion? I move we enter into a contract with uh, Inland, uh, Inland Potable. Potable to epoxy and repair uh, the uh, tanking question. Okay. All right. We got a second from uh, Director Sperry. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We got a vote of three. Okay. Is that the end of it? Uh, no, we're going to go on to um, page 46. Oh. Uh, this is uh, to ensure consistency with the district standing operating procedures needed to be created within our daily operations water samples, first and third Tuesday of each month. If followed, the SLP will assist anyone in gathering these samples. This is an SOP on how to go pick up samples. Uh, you know, it, it's it's um, you know, this is a lot of cutting and pasting from other other uh, document AWWA standards, um, other districts, this and that. It's this is the standard. We don't have anything that I've seen here where Augustine or myself could just go take over and pull samples if need be. Randy and Jose have done that forever. So this is just making everything consistent and everybody on the same page. Okay. And these standards, they, these aren't these aren't just standards for the district. This is everybody does everything this way. This SOB, you know. Um, I looked into other agencies and um, this fits. Um, this fits what we're doing as well. Um, it just uh, simplifies it and makes it so anybody can do it. Okay. Comments, here, Ray? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm looking at this list of, uh, I, yeah, I assume, the chemicals. Yeah, the, the, the MCLs, the maximum. Yeah. yeah. And um, how many of these 
are in our way. I see carbon kept, and isn't that usually what it comes from like a cleaner's? You know, a cleaner, cleaners use carbon tip, I think. I was wondering, how many of these things do we ever see in our water? Henry, I'm not quite sure. Oh. Each well is unique, you know what I mean? Oh. This is just, these are the the MCLs for anything, you know what yeah, I mean? Just, um, it's the EPA, EPA's things that direct us to test for these. Yes, things. and you know what, that's changing. Every, every year we have to take more samples and change for more things, and then they start... They say, okay, we want you to start testing for sodium chloride, or, you know, and then they, 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 they find their levels, you submit all year long, you say, okay, the lake dump pages typically at this level, then they come up with, the, okay, well, this is where we want you. So it's, it's ever-changing. It's, it's always... Well, the reason I ask the question is, maybe I missed it. Well, I don't... Now, is that... I don't see nitrates because that's always the big deal down in the valley, you know, nitrates. Mm -hmm. And that is that is not one. Is that in it? Well, are we are we talking apples and oranges here? Because do what? you take a sample directly at the well? Are these samples at after the water has been processed? Is it all of all the above? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You they don't have nitrates, or they don't even check for nitrates. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, and, and that's one thing we're working with the state on right now. It, the state sees that we have wells. And they're like, you need to test all of the, the wells, right? Right at the well. And we're working with the state. We're like, okay, we'll do that. However, that water gets sent to the treatment plant. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're working with our regulators right now on all that. And uh, this is a large piece of the puzzle that they want. They don't have a standard operating procedure for, for much of anything around here. So we're providing this, uh, like, just like the um, tank reports, giving this to the state. It's making them happy and making them see that we're all on the same page. So I, that's why I've kind of been rolling this stuff out with direction from Bruce, which is our regulator. Bruce Wedding? Bruce Wedding? Ramsden? Any other comments? Um, the one thing I, I want to know is, I, I follow what you're doing here for state. Yeah. Of, my question is, how do you implement these changes here locally? What do you do, to do with the staff? Do they sign off on it that they've been given these and read these? And yes. Okay. That's that's the if if you guys approve this, mm -hmm. then that's what's going to go to. And then it's us going to go to this particular one. It's going to be the four of us: me, Augustine, Jose, and, and Randy going out pulling samples, okay. just getting on the same page. Because to a certain extent, any SOP, you know. Well, yeah. So yeah, make sure yeah. we implement it, and everybody's. I'll say, if somebody, if we, for whatever reason, somebody doesn't follow the procedure, we end up having bad samples or whatever. Yeah. Um, second question is, when you run a well, I mean, if you've had it on for a while, I mean, if the water's been sitting there, it changes the dynamics. How are you, if you have to start doing the wells, or are you doing the wells today? We're running wells. But are they, when you go to pull these samples, have they been running, or do you start them up to take that sample? I mean, you, typically, you typically pull a sample once the well's running. But I see what you're getting at, because yeah. a stagnant well saying that you fired up, you know, that's the first draw. Right. I can't get to that. Right, right. Yeah, so like on a... Um, Hi, Russ. Hello. Hello, Russ. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll be right back. Sorry. Okay, go ahead, go ahead Patrick. Yeah, on any, uh, like, uh, 11 copper sampling, they require that it's the first draw. So if we were going to run in the sink, as soon as you turn it off, wells aren't the same thing. Okay. You I mean you typically you're going to run them for a little while. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions, Emery? No, I'm fine. No. Uh, do I have a motion? Um, yeah, I approve. Uh, make motion. So I move that we accept the uh, the SOP. Okay. No. Second. Okay. So. For the record, Emory made the first motion, Nellie second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. You know, um, we are ahead of time. If you want, we can go back to this manager report. That could be going on forever. And, and well, let's just finish where we're going here. We're done here, though, right? No, we have a couple more. There are? Yes. Are uh, uh, we were on 5E, page 57. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I see that. This is the. No, no, no. I just got the raw tank as though. Hmm? I just had the raw water tank. Um, just that one item. The last one we just did was page 46 through 56. Yeah, okay. Okay, now we're on to page 57. 
which is a uh, discussion slash action regarding CEQA biological review estimate. Now, all I had in my folder was this. Okay, well that's, yeah, dirt. So you got, uh, I brought it last month. Okay, I, I just, I didn't know, I, I'm just making everybody yeah. aware that we're on page 57 and, I, and there was nothing, so for me or Russ who wasn't here. There's either. no new information other than what I'm about to tell you guys. Okay, so this is information only? Yes, Okay, so this is, okay, thank you. Yeah, so, uh, oh, here I see it. Oh. I brought to you uh, an estimate from Augustine and Associates to do our CEQA. Um, Time is of the essence, as we know down at intake, so that was the only estimate we were able to receive. I wanted to move forward. Uh, you guys approved. In the meantime, speaking with USDA, uh, our representative with USDA, she's, she's very involved. Um, and with our engineer, we thought it would best, best serve the district to get an additional estimate. So this, I'm stepping back. And trying, uh, I've been trying it last week and beginning part of this week to get an additional estimate to make sure okay. that it, it, it's the best thing for the district. Okay. So that's that's all I'm doing there. That's so the schedule right now. Okay. So last last month it was approved and moved forward. So we're gonna pull that pull back. back a little bit to try to get an additional estimate. Okay. Okay. So information only. So we'll be revisiting this again in the near future. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So let's move on. The last item is uh, I was information purposes only. It's the discussion regarding take inspection reports. Dan, did you? Um... Yes, um, I'm going to tell you right now, Director Warren came in at 118. Okay. And uh, at this point in time, uh, and Director Hankemeyer came in at 119. And uh, also we'll just please note that items on discussion and action items a through D, Director Warren and Director Hankermeyer, there was they did not vote on those. So just for they were the record, gone. Okay, were, thank you. They were here. Okay, so just so you know, they were not here. Okay, okay. perfect. And then the last two items are uh, items E and F, and they're discussion and information only. Okay. So the, now we're on page fifty-eight, which is the take inspection reports. Yeah. Um, with that. For the most part, other than what we've I've asked to be approved, the epoxy of the Avenida, um, and it, everything looked really good at the two tanks that were inspected. Um, if you went through them, some gaskets need to be added, some wire mesh, and that's stuff we're going to do in-house. But other than that, it's the, uh, the approval of that $7,500 to fix the potential corrosion on the bottom of the tank. Uh, I will say these are our two new tanks. You know, now one had never been cleaned, so there's a lot of sediment, but when we start getting out to our other tanks, um, I have a feeling there's going to be quite a bit of uh, uh, mitigation work to be done. So that's kind of the discussion I wanted to have with this. These are two brand new tanks, and then the additional s seven that need to be, one is, is down to intake, which is new, so we'll be good on that. But the other six tanks, those are old, old concrete ones, and, and we might... I'm going to start setting aside money right now for next year's fiscal budget to have those fixed because I'm just anticipating that. But we are going to get those cleaned, all the tanks, and inspected. Um, they're, they're scheduled for, I think it was late September, early October to get back out here to do the mitigation work and do the rest of the cleaning. You know, you know I know that you had been out of this year's budget, mm -hmm. I guess, probably not paying the 30 grand mm -hmm. for the... Um, Engineer in the right. So you know, we picked up thirty grand. You're spending seven, say seventy five hundred or twenty five percent of it. Yeah. So if the other tanks, I mean, if we could get it done, oh, yeah. I mean, it would be great to have them done within kind of a close proximity. That way, we can say they were all cleaned and inspected at this time, and then three years. I, I read it two to three years again. Do it. I mean, I'm hoping if we can afford it. Yeah. If we if nothing else breaks, maybe you know, yeah. um, if we can do it. I mean, absolutely. So. It, and I agree 100%. I'd like to get everything done at once, yeah. you know, so then we could see, okay, and then and then say we go back to, um, you know, uh, one of the tanks in two or three years, and we, we notice there's lots of debris in this, not the other ones. We'll, we'll start figuring out what's going on, the issues that may arise, but uh, uh, I agree 100%. Because I've been here eight years, mm -hmm. and I don't ever remember us cleaning or inspecting those tanks that I don't wear. It's never, raw water right here has never been done. Okay. And, and how old is that tank? 
uh, I think 2008. Well, it says right on it. Oh, yeah, that's good. We can I think it's a little earlier than that. Yeah, it's never been done. Okay. And they, they, well, like they said, typically to clean a tank that size, it's one to three hours. They're out here for a day and a half. Yeah. Non stop. Yeah. So it's never been done. And um, like I said, I think that's going to really affect our, our dosing, our chemicals. It might. Yeah, you know, it'd be curious to see if yeah. you see a change or having to use less economically. Yeah. What is it? What did it cost us? You know, and, and then the thing is the maintenance. At least we know the condition. And yeah, well, there's definitely going to be sediment at the bottom of that one. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. But there was like nine inches of sediment at yeah. the bottom of that one because it's never been done. Which so, one is it? Uh, the rock tank right here. Central wasn't bad. You know, central was what they said they, they typically find in a, in a tank. You know. So, you know, our treatment plant's doing the job. This kind of fish. The raw tank? Were there fish in it? They so were they big? They didn't state anything about fish in there. <laughs> Supposedly there was some fish in the raw. Any um, survey has been done in the past. Okay. Well, I can't because remember. Because they thought it was leaking and stuff. I, I can't ever remember it being done in since. Yeah. That's what I can remember. Yeah, well, that's good. I think that's a great yeah. thing to get these, I'll say, benchmarks. And this yeah. this outfit, they've they've treated us very good. Okay. They're receptive. They get out here. So. All right. Any other questions? Or I, I'm glad to see this getting done. I'm very happy to see this getting done because uh, huge investments and key key assets within this. Uh, district to keep water in it. With that, those assets are all going to be protected with fences, too. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the fencing contractor is supposed to be, he's saying October, beginning of October, because he works for Foster Farms and PG&E, so we're yeah. on the bottom of the totem pole there, but he said they're going to get, they will be done by October, so all of our tank sites will be enclosed as well. You know, brings me to the thing you just gave us, an SOP on sampling. Mm -hmm. What do you have? Do you have an SOP for security and locking gates and things like that? No. Might be something you look into because uh, it would be, you know, if you, we're going to the expense of putting in fences and if we don't have a procedure and if you can't hold the guys accountable to make sure they're locked or whatever, it might be something that, you know, you put into place. I'll, I'll just say, because it is security, it is health issues and everything else along with it. Mm -hmm. So just uh, to protect it and say, okay, guys, one key or whatever you want to do or, you know. Okay. You know, just um, because that way then, then, then it doesn't leave it up to question, well, do I have to lock the gate or if I have to come and go, it's a pain in the ass to unlock. But, um, yeah, and that, that fixes the process point of an intake in the house. Yeah. You know, I was thinking when you talked about this main tank, how much that water line has leaked mm -hmm. from the, so you know, the sediment is probably normal. So that's our next key thing, get that main line repaired and uh, eliminate that. So, yeah, okay. All right, any other questions or concerns about uh, the tank inspection reports? If not, I'll... Uh, all that at this point in time. And what I'm going to tell uh, Director Warren and Hank Amari is we had a, a, a motion to move into the discussion and action items first because of uh, the potential of power outages. So we're going to go back right now to section three on the um, uh, uh, agenda. And we did add, there's one uh, a piece of paper that was brought in. And it's an estimate from MarTech. It's this piece of paper right in front of you. And so we're going to add this to the manager's report. Patrick will be going over it. So that was one consensus and adjustment we made to today's agenda. So with that, um, I have nothing to report at this point in time. I'm glad to see the work that's being done. And uh, the only other thing I, I think that we owe you is an evaluation. We're supposed to do one uh, at your year anniversary and we oh, yeah. so behind. Yeah. So if I can say if it's appropriate and get a consensus from the board, if you want to put together a summary of your accomplishments or key uh, deliverables from uh, say January till June of this year, then we will revisit that. We'll have a closed session for next month, if, if that's appropriate with everybody. You know, and we'll have a discussion at that point in time where it's um, 
So if you can pull that together and have questions or whatever, that way we can bring that in and uh, do it. We're, we're just uh, three months behind, so. We basically want him to write his own evaluation. Well, I, I'm not asking him to be No, it. no, no, I'm, I'm just saying, we want him to write his evaluation and then we'll critique it. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, Patrick also brought in the uh, leak report. He knows it's very small to read, but you know, otherwise it's a huge sheet of paper, so you can uh, put your bifocals on and get your magnifying glass out to read it. So, okay, Patrick, let's go on to your report, which is on pages three through seven. Yeah. Uh, I will highlight a couple things in here. Um, start off with this paper. Study. <clears throat> I spoke with uh, our representatives with NBS Financial about moving forward. Um, it's something that I know we never want to talk about, you know, the economic downturns, but it's something that has to happen within the district. So their, the model rates they came back at were just astronomical numbers that, to, you know, on paper it shows we need to raise our rates a lot to maintain the system. Um, I told them to pump the brakes because that's nothing that we'd be able to implement. It's just, it's not going to happen, the amount in which they were saying. So, we were Can fine. Can I ask what they were suggesting? Well, they were, they were talking about, yeah, you know, if, because what it is, Dan, if, if we put in all of our crit critical infrastructure needs, they're taking that amount and how we diversify that without the, you know, throughout the community to pay for all those. So it was coming up with raising rates a few hundred percent. Of course, that's not going to happen. You know, so what we do, we have to pump the brakes, we have to pull some of those CIP projects away and come up with something that the board, myself, and this public is going to be able to stomach that will bring us additional capital so we could continue to upgrade the system. So it's that fine line there. Um, so now we're looking at uh, we're looking at other rates around. We're looking at other recent rate increases, like typical percentage increases, and and looking at uh, ways of doing that. Um, with this conversation, I, I was able to. We have uh, three uh, in-person visits from this group. Um, so that's to the board or to the public, whatever you know, whatever that may be at this time with the coronavirus. I mean, all that stuff is a bit different. Um, they said there may be uh, uh, more money. Um, we, in in the estimate, um, we are not we're not following through or not following through. We're not moving in the direction um, taking a look at the availability lots. We're unable to do that. So with that, there's some money left over. So if we needed more in-person visits to to explain to the board, myself or public, they are able to do that. But right now it's just essentially me and MBS coming up with a, a, a percentage that sounds good, a, a model, and presenting it to you guys. And from there, figuring out what, what we want to do. Comments, Edward? No comment. Russ? Question, not so much a comment. As I remember the procedure, once we got our ducks in a row, our next step is to go to the public. So we have a public meeting at the mm -hmm. high school. Uh, and so, obviously we can't do that at this point, and there's no way to do that particular thing online, so... There are, there are. That, that's, I asked that same question. That's what they're doing, right? It would be an event like this where, just like, you know, where you have to uh, add a Zoom option to the public. Well, we just, I think we'd get 12 people into something, I mean, that's... that's and the thing there is, we have to get the, it has to go on to a vote, correct? Mm -hmm. It has to be voted on by the community to mm -hmm. get it approved. It's not us approving this, it's a public vote. Right, but I, I, I figured we're going to have at least two things at the high school. Uh, yeah. and, and obviously, we can, those can't be scheduled in the near future. So, to me, it's a matter of us getting ready for that next step that we can't do. But I don't know. That's just my yeah, I need to present you guys a model first. You know what? You know what? What I think? What the what the um, consultant thinks? You know, just showing you some numbers, and then from there, it's going to fall onto uh, if we agree on that, and then moving forward with the two eighteen. When you're doing this analysis, because I'm going to say that because we haven't had a rate increase in several years mm -hmm. now. Does that factor of 
not doing anything for the last, I'll say, four or five years factor into where you're at today? Do they show that should we should have done this, and do we build a new model going forward? Where we can we implement anything? Where I, I'm just saying we raise uh, the standby a dollar a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that sounds pretty minor, but if we keep it going, you know, if you think if we raise it a dollar this year and another dollar, you know, it, it will bring in some extra revenue. Mm -hmm. You know, where we're not just barely scrimping by, it gives us a little bit of flexibility. You know, yeah. I, I don't know if we can do that long term, and I know that Emory has said, you know, we vote for it, but then we need to do it again right away. What I'm trying to avoid here is... They increase all at once. Well, that and the fact of spending $50,000 to have a study done. To have the study, and that's what I'm trying to avoid in the future, because I'll just go this way. We have 1,300 and some customers, and I don't know how many of them are uh, weekenders, but when you look at that, $50,000, 1,300 customers, Okay, that's uh, a few dollars a year that each customer wouldn't have to pay for four years. I mean, you know, it sounds kind of silly, but it, it, it's still, it's just basic, you know, I, and we're a pretty basic district in a lot of aspects. So. Yeah, and with that, there, there's nothing that, we don't have to go through a, 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 a consultant in the future to initiate rate okay. studies, as long as it goes through the Prop 218. Okay. You know, that, that is legally what, what I've looked into. Right, that, right. That's all that needs to happen. Right. You know, I said that in the beginning. I said we should have staff do that. Mm -hmm. You know, Betsy used to do those studies. and, and You know, at the you know I, I took it. But you guys said you didn't want to do it. Well, it was, I, took it it like the only took it is uh, um, my predecessor said, have no part of doing a rate study on his way out to me. And I said, oh. okay. You know, and he said, he said, do not do the rate study, Patrick. You're going to get your new general manager is going to get yourself oh, in trouble. Oh, maybe he meant don't raise rates for him. Yeah, well, no, no. He said, don't participate in the rate. And I, and well, you're, it, you're getting an unbiased third party coming in. All you're going to do is give them the dynamics, the pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. Here's, what, here's what we have to fix. We have to fix intake. We have to fix this and this and this. How much money? And now you're saying, okay. okay. <laughs> we, we've already spent, I don't know, how many thousands with these people, right? Because yeah. right. Mm -hmm. I signed the check. We, we spent about 17000 We've been spending money on no, lots. So I know. We're well on our way to fifty. <laughs> well, I know. I, I'm not, I, I know that. But what I'm saying in the future is, <clears throat> if we start the messaging now that we want to avoid a outside agency, yeah. and if the community has confidence in the board and can you know uh, support this, that we can avoid spending these fees. But otherwise, it's you get okay. Well, here's what I want, and here's what someone else wants, and then you know, because now we have you know it becomes a. Uh, the board's doing this to us because they want certain things, and I'm trying to avoid that. But what I want to try to get is if we could come to a consensus, you know, and to educate the community. In the future, we're hoping to do these things ourselves. If we can get this through, and here's what we need it for. And in the future, we're going to try to do this on a more frequent basis, where you don't feel the sting as much. That's just reality. That's just reality, and nobody likes hearing that rates going up. But nobody doesn't want to go without water. Yeah. So, I mean... Well, here's history 101. Here we go again. We had those people come in. They did the study. The district didn't use it. Didn't have them do it. But we used Charisse used it. And that's why we had difficulty, if you recall, getting people to come back to do a study for us because we took their information and we did our own thing. It's about what we're getting ready to do, which we probably shouldn't do. We should either do our own study and figure it out ourselves, but don't take their information and not let them f finish this process. No, I have no, no desire to. Well, if they're, how far into it are they? Well, $70,000 worth, what is that? No, they give them the, no, give them. no, 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 right now, right now we're, they haven't done any, they, they're just presenting the model. The model that came to us was crazy because we don't have a hard time showing the need in this district. You know what I mean? So, so when I, they asked me for a list of CIP projects, you know, there's a lot. Yeah. So now it's just narrowing down. We're going to have to, me working with them, come up with a number that, that, they've, that they feel 
as the experts, they're able to. And then with that, they're, they're selling everything. They're, they're, they're going to be here talking to everybody. They're going to run a 218. They're going to do all that. No, wait a minute. And that's the opposite of what you just said. No, no. You, you don't want to spend the 50 grand? No, I, I'm trying to understand. Okay, what I'm trying to say here in a very candid manner is I'm in support of spending the 50 grand now mm -hmm. to get this, this thing launched because we haven't done it for so many years. Yeah, yeah. So my, my objective in saying, let's do it in the future, is to say to the community, as we launch this, we need your support. In the future, we don't want to go have these, we don't want to do a rate increase, everything stays stagnant for five or six years, and then a rate increase. We want to kind of keep it on a, a level plane where it's just slightly going up. And I'm hoping that we can say in the future, we're going to come to you and say, we're doing okay, but we need to do these projects. We don't have money. We've got grants, we've got this or whatever. And to keep it going up where we can continue to add a little bit of money into our bank account so if something happens, we don't have to panic. And so that's what I'm saying. No, I'm full support of going through this process now because of the fact we've had this gap of time. But then in the future, I'm hoping that we can do it. And it, again, it doesn't have to be rocket science. We can say, okay, we want to raise the service charge a dollar a year or two dollars a year over the next four years. It's not going to be a lot of money, but it gives us the ability to do it without spending the 50000 That's my goal. Well, with, I know, but then when you do that, then these guys will have to be the presenters because you're still going to do a 218. Yeah, well, yes. Not we'll, to do a 218. Right. But, and if you can have, then have meetings. But, right. Um, so right. Uh, we're going to, you, we're, we have to be salesmen. We have to sell us to the public. We well, have yeah. to. And I and you know I we have enough things I think that we could sell them to the public. Right. But well, that's it. You know, just to, uh, one reason we're doing these meter audits is so we have staff in front of homes all throughout the district. I want you know I want them to see our guys out there. You know, I mean, I, I really do. I want them to see it. You know, see so we could start selling. So Randy, Jose, and, and Augustine could start selling it with with hey, this is what we're doing for you. This is what you know. And so we're trying to start at the grassroots to do that. Danny, what they'll probably do if you do this 50 grand and carry it through, they're going to give you a schedule for probably four years out of mm -hmm. raises. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that'll get you four years out, or five, or whatever you know, it is, because they're not going to do all that they want to do all at once. And uh, then, then, I mean, you're still, like, we want to be on the board probably in four or five years from now. <laughs> right. Right. Somebody else to figure out what they're, these guys are going to do. But, they may want to have somebody come in and do it. But you're, you're right. Uh, we don't want to be in that. We, we want to be able to raise rates for the next 10 years without, I mean, like you say, uh, not a large increase, but make sure we have that ability to do that. If we just allow ourselves only four years, that's not going to work. Well, well you can go 10 years. You can go 10 years, you know. You can okay. do anything you want that's, to do. Yeah, right? Gonna, I think we're going to have know. a rate I, schedule. As long as there's a rate schedule. To can show I interject? <laughs> Well, I'm not positive, but I think there's a government code, and I, I may be wrong, but generally they go out with a five-year increase. Mm -hmm. At the end of the five years, that's when you have another study done, mm -hmm. and because the prices of water, meter, everything has changed, Labor. they do another study after and do another five-year. The issue here was that no one went out after the five-year because we had a lot of turmoil and things going on. So right. generally, they will do those increases, like a dollar a month or whatever, right. each year. But it's generally, and I'm not sure if it's in a government code or where, right. but generally it is a five-year. And then it needs to be reassessed. Plan. Most of them have a five-year plan. Yes. Does so every single rate increase require on this 218 study? Unless yes. Unless they're automatic. Now, unless they're automatic on, on a four-year plan, right? Yeah. Well, that... Or five year plan. It goes out to the 218, but that 218 will involve that five years. At the end of that five years, you have to do another 218. That's why you want to go out for another five years. Not do it every year, but another five years, because you have to do a 218 each time. But if you're on a rate but, increase study of plans, if yes. you want to get another plan, that's not good. Right, that so, poor planning. so what happens is when, they, when you do the 218, they will do this study, 
they will bring you out for five years. At the end of that five years, you're ready for another study to take you out to another five. So the 218 happens the every five years, if that's when your, your study is. This, this may not be directly connected, but I just thought of it. When this drought started, we found ourselves ultimately in the end, but we're very lucky because we had a million dollars. Mm -hmm. That enabled us to do the wells and do the things we had to do. And I would really prefer that we never find this district without a million dollars in the bank in the same thing. No matter what this rate increase thing and our capital expenditure stuff is, we need to plan on having a million dollars or maybe a little more just to fund stuff when it becomes available. I said in the last meeting we should have five million dollars because these tanks cost a million dollars each and um, when Danny was the manager, his brother was the uh, <coughs> manager of Castroville, they had 31 million and you took, and I said at that meeting, you said you had 120 million in, in reserve. In so reserve. reserve. So water reserve. 120. Yeah. So we got nothing. We no, I'm going to say that an absolute minimum for us, we've yeah. got to well, have a And that's why, so I think Cindy's explanation is if we, okay, when was the last time we had a 218? I want to say that it ended in 2015. Was it 15 or 10? Well, it was yeah, quite sorry, a run. It started in when I end, yeah, years. when it ended. It started and, in two ten and, and mm -hmm. capped at, at, at two fifteen. You know, don't quote me on that, okay. but I think okay, it's so been. Okay, so here's here's what we basically missed: is we missed five years. We That's missed right. one complete yeah. cycle, and we can say we understand why because in the drought and everything else, yeah. not a good time. But now we have to move forward, and I, I think if people understand, yes, I mean, to me. I know you can spin things a lot of different directions. I'm not a spinner. I'm a direct person. I'm going to hit you right in the face and say, here's the basic facts. And if you want this district to continue and you want this your property to have value, we've got to do these repairs. It's, you know, it's aging. And, and that's part of what you're getting with this company. Right. They will come and do the presentation, right. explain it all. They've looked over all of our projects and our numbers and everything. And that's what you're getting. Now is first. Now is first. The rate study that that we have to do every five years. Does that have to be from an outside? No. It does or not. Can we do our own rate study. You can. But the thing there then is, do we have the resources and the knowledge in house to really look at that? So when you look at the big picture, is it really worth? I'll say stirring that pot internally here amongst the board and, and, the, and the staff and the community or you go to an outside unbiased party and that's the benefits of going And I, if you go if you under go what it board, should be, then it falls back mm -hmm. and here. Even with kind of what you guys are mentioning, um, in the future possibly we may be able to use an outside agency just to do the 218 mm -hmm. and we could do, as you're mentioning, kind of a study ourselves you know, percentages seeing you know seeing what the uh, CIP projects for the year are going to entail, forecasting, well, you, and yeah. then we could pay someone to actually do the the two eighteen the administrative portion, portion. The administrative kind of like the Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, based on what you said, I have a quick question. I'm going to go to you. I was going to point to you and say go. <laughs> yes, sir. You brought up ten and then fifteen. So are you telling me it's been five years since we did rates, or ten years? Because basically, we'd have to look at it. I, I don't know. Cindy Holland was Pete here. Because there's a re there's because he, he just said Pete didn't want to do rate increases. Right. There it is. Yeah. Pete was here at least five years probably, mm -hmm. and he never brought up the subject. So it's been ten years since we had a rate no, increase. No, no, we had one. We had one, and it went into effect because I moved here. I've been here 10 years, I've lived here 10 years, I've had my house for 15, and I couldn't believe how cheap the mm -hmm. monthly water rate was. I told my wife, I can't believe how cheap this stuff is, and then it went up from like $20, and, and then the monthly fee went up pretty aggressively, and I know that, but it's been a long time, so I bet it started, and I'm just rounding numbers, the last time they started it was in, I'll say 2010, when they maybe did it, Emory, I am. Charisse it probably was, ended Charisse in 2015. Was the finance person. Wes was on the board. Okay. Okay, that's how long ago it's been. Okay, Wes hasn't been on the board. I've been on the board eight years. So it was prior to that. So round numbers, it's been the, the last rate increase probably took effect 10 years ago. Yeah. 
and ran for five years, somewhere yes. in that range. So we haven't touched the subject for five years. Multitude of reasons and reasons why, but now it's imperative that we do to move the district forward. I guess my real question would be, and Cindy could probably fairly easily do this, and if, when was the last time the customers actually saw an increase in their bill? So that would have been I believe like that was around 2015. Uh, 2015. I want to say 2015. 2015 or 2016, ended. right? right yeah, there. right around there. I believe is when it ended. Yeah. Uh, but I can, we can look that up and, and, it's, and it's send just, it to you guys. This is education for all of us. So in reality, if we can get this through, mm -hmm. I'm saying this board, I'll say transition or flips or whatever, yeah. the new board coming in really needs to get on that. So therefore, it would be wise to have an outside agency do it again and take the 50 grand. But I just got to get I want to take that money and spend it here for us, you know. Justification. Yeah, this is a, this is good. Just the five yeah. years without anything. I, mm -hmm. In 2015, uh, Pete had correspondence with NBS Financial about potentially doing a starting a study. Okay, so and that was in 2015. They, they were here. We they went through that with us. Yeah. So. Okay. So. We, we need to look at your new model and bring it to us. And I'll say, you know, you have a, you know, it's kind of like when you go shopping at the grocery store. You have a needs list and you have a wants list. And you just have to say, we, we want all of this, but we need yeah. this and we're going to have to do this, well, you know. Right now, it's, we're just intake. I, I fully agree. Intake is the only thing we're even adding to to the, the rate study because you know and it's it's imperative. It's, yeah, it's imperative. And we could possibly we could show a decent model for for our our, cus our residents because once we get the terms from USDA on repaying that you know that amount, then if that's over 20, 30 years, then we could show that on on the, the increases as well. So it's not such a steep increase. Right. So. But we don't have any terms from the USDA prior because it's not done yet. You right. know, so and I know in, if you go, I'll say, short term, five years, so we have to raise enough to pay, I'll call it a loan yeah. for the intake. But in five years, this tank drops off, and then that will give the next people that revenue to start yeah. the next set of projects. And that's what we have to pay for this long term project is this. No, we're not going out and putting a band aid on things, folks. Yes. You know, we're doing this long term. Yeah. So. And you know, say we spent this much money. If you get down to it, how much money have we spent repairing? I would say the line down there, the leaks. So if you say that, say okay, that has cost each one of you this much money per month. So we're going to try to avoid that in the future. All these little things, and you're going to have to put it to their terms. How do we communicate that to them? Yeah. You know, so, okay, good job. Yeah. Okay. So that hey, that was. That, that was the big agenda, so a water rate study. That is, I will have something for you guys next month um, on a model. Um, CEQA, I let, um, I think everybody was here. Uh, we moved forward last month. You guys approved us moving forward with um, an estimate from an environmental uh, agency to perform our CEQA. I kind of pulled back on that after getting some later information. I'm trying to get a secondary estimate together. We could save some money. Um, so it's, you know, I want to hurry up and do it, but I want to, do it financially how I should, right? Um, uh, we were able to, not everywhere, we were able to get $30,000 from the Irwin Group to help us with our preliminary injury report. We already we already did. So it's 30000 free dollars given to us to, to help. So we, I was ecstatic getting that. Um, so whole system meter audit. I know I've had a lot of questions on it. And um, so anyway, I've, I've gotten with Augustine, who's done pretty much every one of these, and um, roughly 600 district meters have been visited. And with those, you, we have 10% of them meters are bad. So bad and not registering? Under registering. Under registering. Yeah, every meter, when it gets old, it under registers. You know, AWA, AWWA standard even states that. It's not an opinion. They all under register. So right now we're looking at 10% of our meters are under registering. So, uh, but the positive thing is, is Augustine's already gotten out to 600, so he's roughly halfway done, mm -hmm. you know, correcting those. Yeah, it's worse than that because 10% of 600%, which is 
uh, of a thousand yeah. that you got. So it's, it's really bad. Yeah. So we're out there, we're, we're, we're upgrading those meters in the best way we can right now, which is just one at a time, and we're going out and we're replacing them. Um, and he's identified all kinds of things. Today I, I saw when I was driving around, he was replacing a box for someone and bringing it to your aid, getting a level, marking it out on the street. So so every meter he visits, everyone he paints, the blue line on the road, updates it, raises the box, all those things. So we remember, you know, it makes our job easier moving forward. Can I make one last comment back on the meters? But you know, you've got a board here that's willing to do this uh, increase, which is rare since I've been. <coughs> you really should move on your increase because any one of us could resign, quit, or go away. You've got a board that supports you on an increase. I think you should at least put that, make that a top priority for you. Oh, it is, uh, be, behind it, well, they're hand in hand intake and increase. Yeah. You know, they, they, but, but those are those are the numbers. You can get people running the board to say, I will not raise rates. You get three of those guys on their board, I don't know what you do. <laughs> Do something else. Yeah. And get it ready. So if, if these things are under... They're under registry, so, so you're... That, you're that, that also indicates leaks, right? No. Loss. No. But it's going to change loss. your water loss. loss. Yeah, water loss. So what that does, it say, so say you really get 100 gallons, or the meter's showing you get 50 gallons, so you get free water. So it is something that bills are going to be increasing within the district because we have meters that are working properly now. Um, and that, you know, that's kind of, you know, that, that it is what it is. So like 65, cop pulls over and says, I'm doing the 65, I thought you are doing 85. Yeah. <laughs> Get a ticket. Um, yeah. This brings me to another thought. How old were the meters that were being pulled? They're out? all from 2011, the installations, huh? The installations are generally 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're eight years old. What's the life cycle? But they're not eight years old. Those were sitting on That's a shelf when they for were installed. Five years. Five years. Five years. Okay. Yeah. So basically, uh, rate study and meter replacement. But well, why would a meter have to be replaced with sitting on the shelf not being used? Why would? Why would? Well, why I just said as far as the warranty like went, it was gone out the window. Yeah. It was five years. They went out of business. I love Amco. Amco went out of business. Amco. It no, doesn't have a really good being, reputation on the meter in general. They're not being used. Yeah. Would, what would that have? What effect would that have on the meter? Well, the, so, we weren't we weren't getting a warranty because we didn't use them right away. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah, yeah, if they were installed, we might have we might have been able to uh, uh, figure out if there was a manufacturer's oh, I deficiency see. in them. But they sat so long, and they, you know, and this is all hearsay. I, you know, I wasn't here. Um, but yeah, they're, they're almost every meter that's bad is from 11, 2011-2012 install day. Does that mean when we put a new one in, it's only going to last eight years? I sure hope not. Um, we're going back with a real, it's a generic meter uh, through Badger. It's When I say generic, so we could... Uh, if you we change the... The AMR, the reading tool. But the meter is a real generic, basic, uh, uh, bra or brass meter to it's... it's Everybody uses it. Everybody uses this. Amco. It, it was a it was a meter company that. It, well, the other thing this allows them to do too is if they have a bad meter in the future, they could probably just change the recording, the, the recording mechanism, and not have to replace the whole meter, which yes. is more cost effective and yeah. efficient as well. Yeah, these meters that we're putting here right now, we could either put on the uh, the AMR that sends the signal directly to the office if we ever got that technology set up. Or it will continue doing the drive-by, mm -hmm. or you could do it manually read it. So there's three things, and within this district, and how many homes we have, if we had to manually read every meter, it still could get done in a day or two. You know, it, not that we ever want to move back to that, but you know, it, it's, it's not a big. Deal. This this has been a project that has been ongoing for a long time. Yeah. So it's. it's but yeah, and I'll roll right into that into our water loss numbers. Um, our water loss numbers. I you want one to you. guys have, I know what it says. Okay, we're, we're at 15. We're at 15%. Yeah. And, those, and um, that's not good, but it's not horrible. Um, and what I think that will continue to get better, especially with when we get intake fixed, all that water that's losing there, and then all these uh, uh, meters upgraded. I think that number's really going to 
I think well, we've seen that in summertime, like this time of the year, was the worst for leaks. So how's that? How are we doing it so far right now? On the on leaks? Yeah. Oh, we have two or three leaks every week. A week. Yeah, a week. Yeah, the guys have been running around with their heads cut off uh, doing doing leaks. Um, since our last meeting, we've had five service lines fully replaced, uh, two water main repairs, repairs, and then two services where it's leaking right under the curb stop, right at the meter. So that is where you put a band on it. You know, it just makes sense. When you could see the leak right there, it's above ground, you put a band on it. So they fixed five, six, seven, eight, nine since last meeting, and that this was last week when I typed it up. This morning they were out checking out another room. And all these repairs are getting onto our map? Yeah, oh yeah, they are. Okay. They are, yeah, we just, and we just uh, are, yes, they are. They were fully submitted maybe a month and a half ago for all the repairs for, for some time, and then these are all being, uh, he doesn't want them sent to him every day. You know, right. it's, it's like twice a year, I think, we, we figured out. Uh -huh. yeah. I got a question on your, on your report. You haven't been there yet, but why do you have McSwain in here? What, are, what does that have to do with us? Because I must have sent you the wrong. <laughs> the wrong I must have sent Sam I probably wrong. did that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's my fault. I sent, I, uh, that's my fault. I sent Cindy the wrong. Okay. Yeah, we got the exchequer in it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna, the flows. I'm going to charge you 10 minutes' time for reading. Yeah, that's why I saw the same thing. Yeah. So, Let, so you got, let's Sorry. keep going, Rancho 2. Okay, Ranchito yeah. Rancho 2. Rancho 2, um, that, I just got confirmation from Hauk, I will I'll read it to you this morning, um, that the Tom Weimer, uh, the, 10, the 10 horsepower pump is going to be factory warrantied. Yeah. And they recommend us changing a little uh, the, the specs on the pump, but yes, it's going to be covered under factor specs or on. specs on the, the, the motor. I don't okay. know. I don't know what he's talking about. Okay, I'm not because if, if you, well, I guess this is submersible, you'll have to pull it out on the, you know. It's already been pulled out. Okay. Yeah, he already pulled it out. It's been pulled and and they're, they're going to warranty it. Are they so, doing all the labor and everything, all costs? Or are they just. Yeah, they, they've, they haven't charged a penny. Is that so, the same electric motor we had problems with before? Yeah, six months ago. It ran for, so, so it was down six, six, seven months ago. So uh, I got Hauk in here. They pulled it and uh, they replaced the motor and it ran for 14 days. And, Friday. So, yeah, Friday. So we, I actually have a, um, so, I have a so who's paying for that, that downtime that we lost? The downtime. Nobody. There, I mean, it's just the pump's inoperable. I know. Uh, what so, you're saying is, if we needed it. Yeah, if we if we were, if that's the only thing we had, <laughs> where would we be? Oh, I mean, it's, it's, everything down yeah. here. Yeah, I know. If that's all we had, luckily it's not all we had. Are they going to replace the pump too, or what? What do they say? Because the motor. So they have a they have a pump. They, there's a, a a motor report, electrical pump motor report uh, from. The gentleman, I don't know what anyone says. Okay. So he's he's done, is this oh, yes. Yeah, and he has the whole report and um, how systems they have an electrical engineer that they okay. bring out with all this stuff. So it's not just like you and I out there saying, oh, we think we need this and that. So he tested it and he, he thinks he knows why it failed okay. and they're going to make those adjustments prior so to putting the new one in. They're going to mess with the impeller trims and get it right this time for the right hand and flow. Well, they can't. I mean, they're gonna have to, if they're gonna try to do that, they're gonna have to send that pump to a pump shop, electrical they shop. They are a pump shop. Yeah. Yeah, they are. So find out before before you let find out what if they're saying is it overloaded? Is it burning up because of high? I have I have the whole report. Okay. The whole report. <laughs> is it normally what a, the reason a pump goes bad is either too much dirt or yes. not it runs dry? It's off the curve. Well, but that's simple. I mean, it had can be off the curve and cause all sorts of okay, and what, what, cavitation. And what Russ is referencing right. to there, when they start trimming the impellers, that that electric motor could be overloaded. But you can really overload those things, and no more than it's running, it shouldn't really hurt it. So it sounds like there's other issues there. If I could find it, I'll read you guys a report right now. If you guys want to ask me some other <laughs> questions not, on anything else, uh, it's not that critical. But I just, yeah, I was just. Okay. Well, yes, it is. That thing has been on our agenda for the last three years. But the ratio two more. But Dan's point is, 
if we needed it, just like with intake going down the other day, that thing is, we spent a lot of money to have that there, and we don't have the ability to run it and service Would you guys like to hear the, the submersible pump test report? Okay, give us, give us the highlights. Okay, the submersible pump, okay, the voltage supply, blah, blah, blah. I checked the motor and the motor cable supplied by Megger. The motor was grounded, zero ohms, but the cable was good. Um, it's not that long, I'll just, uh, the protection relay on the control panel is the Motor Saver Plus by Little Fuse Syncom. That some configuration is not proper for the motor protection, they have to change some parameters based on below. And then, uh, overcurrent protection range has to be changed from 15.4 to 18.8. And then the ground fault range has to be changed from 1.9 to 2. They should have caught The existing was... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't. Um, 2.7. Um, the voltage unbalanced percentage has to change to 2. The existing was at 5. And the restart attempts. So, okay. they're, yeah. So, the, the, they have their... And, and on that, they came to a pump that they were showed up, they were told by me to pull the pump, pump motor and replace it. Because what we knew is this brand new. So we, so we were trying to, you know, the thing had only been in there 14 days. Yeah, well, no, no, prior to that, this is the, now the second time. Right, right. But, the, you know, the pump was just finaled, uh, like, two years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. Is it 10 Yeah. Who installed the pumps? Uh, Canada. They, they installed those in the emergency water supply, you know, the, in 2014, and everything was put in, and there's no paper trail made. Well, it sounds like a combination because if it's a three, it's three phase. Yes. So they're rotating, rotating the legs around because a five percent voltage imbalance is pretty high. Coupled with that other uh, relay, it could have been why it fried. I mean, I'm just yeah. When well, you're talking, you're talking Chinese when it comes well, to no, that's that's what I dealt with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I was asking you. You know, uh, I know. So they're just rotating the three legs, and they got to make sure. This is one thing you want to make sure that they do. When they rotate the legs, if they don't do it right, that pump will run backwards. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. Oh well, yeah, it will run backwards. It will run. It won't do us any good. So it will run backwards. So they have to make sure they rotate them the right way to. to okay. I think so, you're. Go ahead. I, I think you're pretty lucky. Uh, this is absolutely nothing to do with this well, but I bought a starter a month ago for one of the Honda quads. So I went out and didn't start. So I took it out and I called them and they said, oh, if we don't put it in, we don't warranty mm -hmm. parts. When did that start? A long time ago. Yeah, so you got to pay the extra $300 to have them put it in, but mm -hmm. it takes you 10 Anything minutes. Anything electrical. Oh. Anything yeah. electrical, exactly what they said. Yeah. Yeah. So you're lucky that they're fixing it. Well, they know, you know, this, this off, they've been up here twice doing tests, you know, electrical tests, bringing their um, engineer out here and the owners for projects that we have, they haven't got, they haven't even been on. They just came out here to help us out. They're intrigued with intake because the the sorry the, the old man yeah, that's what he calls himself. Him and his dad did intake years and years ago, so he likes coming out. It, it is a unique situation. Yeah, it is. Okay, we've already talked about the tank inspection and cleaning. What's going on there? You already mentioned that barge renovation. Yeah. So with the bar, the barge is still that they're saying September of this year okay. completion date. Right now, I mean, you look at it, the barge looks complete. Um, so uh, Martech also they're doing the, the fabrication of the Ys for the check valves and the pump motors and everything. So that was something we're working with our engineer, Blackwater Consulting. They had an engineer, and we signed a contract three weeks ago, I think to move forward with that. So that's on the schedule with uh, Rick's, his name, Martech. They're going to come do that install on the Y. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a checklist to go down of all the little things. But if you go take a look, you know, the pumps are set. I mean, it's, it's about there. Um, and the scare on Friday, you know, we don't have a barge. Um, I made, luckily, I made two phone calls, and we had a pump and a barge lined up for this morning, if need be. MIV's more than willing to give us a loaner. And uh, Rain for Rent, I think it's Rain for Rent, is their name? Yeah, they, they had a pump. They said any one of their pumps could pump what we need. So they were going to take it down the dock, and Mikey was going to help uh, have a crane to put it on the barge, and we are going to be out there on a rented barge if need be.
If we ever have another contract, we need to have something in there so that penalties and interest for dates certain that this thing get done. Well, not only that, it's gone on for how long? Maybe? Yeah, it's there was still it, it, it started uh, at the beginning of 2019 when I started. Yeah, yeah I believe it's happy. it's about you know it, it is years. way over over budget too. Oh, yeah, yeah that's the other problem. Yeah. It's always over budget. Yeah. And, and that was all built into the contract. It states. 10 to 20 percent increases on the three years have been on our agenda for the last. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll go back to what Emory said a long time ago. I don't know how many boats or barges this district has bought. <laughs> and we have to go back and say, Pete really emphasized the fact of using engineers, doing it properly, and so on and so forth. I think this board has become educated to what is the we're not the experts. We just will say, you know, decisions here, but we really have to continue that philosophy because it is, I think, moving the district forward in the right way and eliminating further problems or potential problems down the road. So, go ahead. Yeah. Um, let's stand for one reason. What's there reports on the ballot? What's that? How many of you guys are on the ballot? None of us. None of us are running. I sent an email. We don't have to go out for an election because the only the three com incumbents are the only ones that signed up. So you guys are automatically yeah, that's around, the board will stay the same. For four years now, and you're excited. Um, you know, all of our equipment. We've started a. Um, Augustine Combo is in charge of uh, doing all of our equipment and uh, vehicle updates. So he has these, he goes through and he, he checks tires and radiator fluid and, you know, everything. Every every week and lists everything. And we've been able to stay on top of our old aging stuff. We have no issues right now. Um, I like that. That's impressive to me that we can keep these old things going. And we don't have to buy new trucks. There's no need for us to buy new pieces of equipment. Once we put all this money into our old piece of equipment, it's running great. Um, Can I comment on that? Because I wrote a note to myself. Yes, sir. And it, yeah, I know we, we won't do anything. I said, the trucks are old. Mm -hmm. We have just enough for the number of the employees. We need some new truck and take and put the existing trucks in some kind of secondary or spare fleet. Like everything else in the district, they are old and well-worn we should take uh, proactive action to avoid a vehicle short crisis. We don't have, you know, you can take these trucks and get a couple, get some new ones, take these other, put them in spare. Because the more you use these old trucks, the worse they get. But I know that's kind of, we don't have the money probably, but we need to start thinking about these trucks are really old. They've been here since I've been here. Yeah. I, you know, I agree. Longer. Yeah, they, and, and we have money set aside for a vehicle or a piece of equipment this year. Good. And, and I kind of want to do a, a, and I'm trying to get the guys by, like, so I kind of want to do a ditch winch, a back truck, back trailer, because that takes away all, pretty much all physical labor for, for, for operation staff on a leak. You go out and you run a hose and you run a, a, you know, a spray lawn, high pressure spray lawn, and a vac. You've been talking about that for more than a year. Yeah, yeah, and so so that's budgeted. And last year I didn't last year I didn't want to do anything if I didn't have to, as far as spending major amounts of money. Uh, this year we have budgeted for one or the other, uh, a truck or a back truck. Um, I, I see what you're saying. We do we need to up, upgrade these vehicles. I just you need you need they can be put into a spare fleet. You don't have to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Just you know then and, and you know that when you get the new one. That's the first one we're going to jump in and drive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, that's not always happens. Point taken, and I, and I do agree, we need to start updating. I'm, I'm cheap. Um, I'm trying not to be cheap on, on our infrastructure, you know, and those are the have to have things. Uh, the nice to have things. Who's going to want them? That's the reason I have yeah. all those tractors, because I've got to be able to do certain things. Yeah. And those pickups, if you're sitting, and uh, taking taxis is not going to be too good. Yep. <laughs> I don't know anybody else agrees with different trucks. But... Yeah. Um, uh, lastly, I, I like in the past, twice this month, I've had a note on my desk or a phone call um, uh, to, to operations staff. Uh, 
uh, receive attaboys, I guess you call them, just people saying they really appreciate the, the, the knowledge and the work, um, and we, they appreciate what the district's doing. Did you tell them that? What? No, I didn't. Oh, did I tell the guy I said? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, first thing in the morning, we sent him a thank you, and you know, I told him to continue doing that. Um, that, you know, that's... Because I guarantee that each one of those people told a couple people who told a couple people, and you know, and those are. In addition, you asked a couple months ago, what other services are we offering? We're we're trying to offer other services just to help people out. Customer leaks, we're not going to fix them, but we'll come out there and help identify them. We'll we'll do anything we can. We're not just going to say it's your leak. Bye. You know, we have some. Uh, I just purchased a split box, um, which is another leak detection tool. And then we have our little ear things that we got, we, we fixed. And if we could go out there and we could help the customers, if we can fix the backside of someone's someone's service line in 10 minutes for $10 in parts, we're going to do it. I thought you said we bid on a, uh, on a contract for fixing a customer's line that last month. Mm -hmm. And I said, is that legal? No. Did you do a customer's line? Yes, yeah, so we did do a customer's line. It wasn't to fix what, it. What was that? It was to move it. So they abandoned their original meter. You're talking about the line to the house, or you're talking about the... No, 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 the service line. Oh, from the water main. Oh, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. We're not, we're not doing a I private doing service the other line. Side of the meter. No, oh. no. On the private service lines, what I'm stating is, if 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 there's a customer that has a leak right there, I, I'm policy. You're, I'm not going to tell a, a 90 year old customer when there's a leak that we can fix in five minutes right there. No, sorry, it's two inches out of our spec. Uh, we're going to do our best to help anybody. Yeah, I understand that. But I thought you were doing the service line. No, no, that was for a customer on the corner of Ranchito. That's right, that's right. Falls Road. Yeah. yeah, his service line was going to be over a thousand feet away from his house. You know, so because their house is built on the corner, so they paid out of their pocket. They paid. They paid the district to, to move the service line by their own Are you talking about moving the, the meter? Or are you talking about the line? We removed the meter that was on Tory because the property is only supposed to have one meter. Yeah. So we removed the meter and then we tapped into a new service, or uh, the water main on Ranchito ran a new service line and then they have that oh, meter. Service service line between Let me take that back. They did not have a meter. meter. They did not have a meter on Tory. It was, it was an availability. They were on a well. So with that, we tapped into uh, Ranchito, we ran the service, and then they purchased the meter from us, and they paid us for doing the work. You're talking about from the main to the meter? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's clear. I'm saying on the additional, we try to, we're going to try to do anything we can I understand to help I just out thought the public moving, on the, I thought on the you meter. bid on moving from the, uh, from the no. service connection to the house. No. Okay. I've been worried about that for a month. No. No. Okay. No, no, no. Good. Okay. Um, yeah. That's that's it. Okay. Um, any comments, Henry? Yeah, well, I'm going to note here on leaks. You know, uh, I put my glasses. Can we start in 08? We started. I got a report, and we eventually got a leak crew, and then uh, eventually we got a grant to fix a certain percentage of these leaks. This board approved that, that grant. Do you know if we are ever going to be in a position where we're not going to have these leaks? I mean, this has been going on for as long as I've been here, and before that, too. Do people ever get to a point where we won't have leaks? We did. What, does anybody remember what the grant was for? A certain percent? Um, 30 percent or something? No, the, the Irwin grant, I think we did 150. 40, 150. 100, so it's 10 percent of the service. 10 percent. 10 percent. Now, that grant, I think we spent, it was like for seven or eight hundred thousand dollars. It might. It was a million dollars, but there's some of the money. So I got money diverted. The other thing, yeah. you know, you yep. sorry, you got you got uh, treatment operators being working out, you know, cost a lot, digging and fixing stuff like that, and you know, we should if we're gonna have we, we need to have a lower cost employee just sit and dig. That's what I tried to do 20 years ago, just fixing pipes and stuff, you know, instead of having a treatment operator. Which is not the best use, I think, because they're getting licenses in there and everything like that that we pay for. I, they, I think, yeah, there's a, I think there's a happy meeting. I know they're going to get there to make the connection. I think there's a happy meeting. I think there's room potentially moving forward to, to uh, even possibly this year, to have a part time employee come around to help. 
Maybe next year in the fiscal's budget, maybe we can look at that and see if bringing in someone else. But at, at this point, um, the workload in the summer it gets a little hectic, but the workload doesn't doesn't justify it. it does not justify it, whether the treatment plant operators or not. Uh, these three can, can do all of it, and and and, and we have four because I offer my services on every lake. They don't want me out there. They don't want me anywhere around there. <laughs> I'm taking a That's person. Not good. That's I'm taking good. a person. Yeah, no, they, they uh, I offer because I love fixing leaks. Um, I so the question is, will this back the truck? Get you to the point. This this back is going to ahead of these leaks. No, no, we're not going to get it. So, so what, what I've seen in a year and a half is the winter and the fall and everything. The leaks are minimal. It's easy. You, know, you, you don't, don't see it. Yeah. Well, they not coming to the You get one or two, yeah. one or two a month at most. In the summer, they're popping up. It's because the demand. You know, right now we're going through seventy acre feet a month. You know what I mean? So, and then, and are we ever going to get rid of? No, because our, our pressure that we run through this system. You know, the pressure's yeah. high, but you have to to get it over the hills or anything. That's well, what... your pressure's high, and the materials initially used are poor. Yeah, the material in the backfill conditions, right. you know what well, I mean? That's, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so there's a little bit about, and, and there's just the age of them. These, these, these poly lines that, you know, you, you get 20, 25 years at best out of them, it's time to upgrade them. But um, I don't see us... Financially being able to have a lead crew and a treatment crew at this time. Okay. Some may be expect that. Yeah. Well. Russ, any comments or questions? No. Dan? No. Okay. I think that concludes today's meeting of August the 17th of the Lake Town Pedro Community Services District. Per the clock I started and stopped with. It's 2.21 p.m. in the afternoon. Thank you. Okay, thank you all for being here.